गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल एम आई ऑडिबल ऑडिबल यस मैडम यू आर ऑडिबल थैंक यू सर थैंक यू गुड आफ्टरनून नून टू वन एंड ऑल प्रेजेंट इ Food communication is just as stimulating as black coffee and just as hard as to sleep after. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. I am Deepa, Department of English, Nanajyoti Degree College, the host for the day. Respected Principal Sir, today's resource person, Professor Nasiman Sir, staff and peer participant. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome you all for today's uh, faculty development program on importance of communication skills in pedagogy. To begin the program, I request our beloved uh, principal, sir, Professor Rangshamaya, to give the inaugural address. Elrigo, Madhyana da, Subha Kamani Gulu. आत्मीय हिरीयर गौरवान्वित सहोद्योगी मित्र कल वार दिवस कल नैक क्रैटीरिया बे वेबिनार ऐर्पड़ी एल अध्यापक हिरीय कि मित्र उत्तम सहकार सिखीत आ निटली नम ज्ञानज्योति डिग्री कॉलेज यलहंक उपनगर कन्ड अध्यापक मित्र क्षमी एल अध्यापक मित्र महित बेहतर विशेषवान उपन्यास मुखातर उत्तम महित निटली इंदू नम आंग्ल विभाग कम्युनिकेशन स्किल इन पेडगोमी विषय बेहतर वेबिनार कार्यगार आयोजित आड़ मंडल सहकार ये इंदी कार्यक्रम कार्यगार संपन्मूल व्यक्ति रिसोर्स पर्सन हिरीयर उत्तम वाग्मी सहृदय तुम सहोद्योगी स्नितर प्रोफेसर नरसीमन सर विजय कॉलेज इवनिंग कॉलेज अंदर इवती संपन्मूल व्यक्ति तमंदे तम विषय हंसक बहुत उत्सुक नम जो बंद दयमी नरसीमन सर नम ज्ञानज्योति पदवी कॉलेज परवा तुम हृदय स्वागत को नमस्कार सर तुम हल पर्चय निम्ब का ना हल्ले स्ने स्वागत समय दयमी कार्यगार अध्यापक मित्र प्रश्न केवश मेलू सहक कार्यगार सदुपयोग पड़को मुद्दा दिवस मत कार्यगार निलू प्रोत्साह भरोसे तमेलू मत कार्यक्रम के स्वागत कार्यगार के स्वागत ना मुगस धन्यवाद As I mentioned earlier, uh, today we have the FTP on importance of communication skills in pedagogy. We have the resource person, Simon Sir from uh, Vijaya Evening College. Thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation and uh, gracing the event by your presence. Thank you so much. And I request Professor Kantham, ma'am, Department of Commerce and Management. Uh, to introduce and welcome uh, uh, our resource person ma'am over to you uh, thank you deepa ma'am very good afternoon to everyone this is dr kantama associate professor department of commerce and management it's my pleasure to welcome all the participants for today's national level webinar on importance of communication skills in pedagogy i feel honored that I was given this opportunity to introduce today's speaker, 
professor narsimhan sir is presently working as associate professor and head department of english vijaya evening college bangalore sir is completed ma in english from mysore university in 1996 and also ma in kannada in karnataka state open university in 2005 Sir is having 27 years of teaching experience, and Sir has taught English subjects for PUC degree and Polytechnic students. Sir is visiting as a guest faculty in various reputed colleges in and around Bangalore. Sir is conducting classes on personality development, body languages, communication skills, and workshops for teachers and students too in various institutions. Sir is actively participated in various workshops and seminars. Presented many more papers in national and international level conferences also. Sir worked as a member in textbook committee for BCom and BBA in Bangalore City University. Sir has read set question papers for BCom, BBA, BCA in Bangalore University, Bangalore City University, and reputed autonomous colleges in Bangalore and reputed universities also. Sir is actively working as a member in board of studies and board of education in the board of education and textbook committee also. Presently, sir is working as a chairperson in BCom and BBA general English textbook committee as per uh, syllabus as per national ed new education policy in Bangalore Central University. On behalf of everyone, we feel very happy to have you our program, sir. I hope today many participants will be able to seek more guidance from your thoughts. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you. Ah, sir. Once again, welcome you, sir, on behalf of our management college and all the participants. Welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kanta Ma'am, uh, for your pleasant welcome. Uh, I know everyone is eagerly waiting for the session. Uh, just a little housekeeping. Uh, before we get started uh, if you have any questions during the session please uh, type them into the question box i will bring them up uh, once we finish the uh, presentation and we will also have the time for question and uh, answer session at the end of uh, uh, the session feedback link will be sent to you at the end of the session kindly fill it and uh, uh, get the certificates now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to Professor Nasiman sir. Uh, our mic is yours now. Thank you so much, madam. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you, sir. Uh, namaste to one and all. Hope I am audible to all my dear friends. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Thank you. Uh, my namaste to the management committee members of uh, Gnanad Jyoti Degree College, respected principal sir, Sri Amsh Ramashamaya, and also my dearest friends, my dearest colleagues from the English department of uh, Gnanad Jyoti Degree College, Simantani Kulkarni Madam and uh, Hanumantraya sir, though she is known as uh, Deepa there, <laughs> but I know her as Simantani Kulkarni rather. Uh, and also not to forget all my dear audience because you know it's always nice to spend some valuable time i mean this one hour will be very invaluable for me especially to spend some time with all the teaching fraternity not necessarily from english department i believe uh, we have teachers from across streams as well we have you know uh, teachers from several other departments i hope so it will always be a rewarding experience for anyone who would like to spend some time you know uh, meaningfully on any webinar as such and uh, my congratulations to especially the management of uh, you know nano jyoti degree college for having you know uh, worked out this wonderful session uh, dear friends well uh, before i get into my ppt anyhow i'll be getting help from my friends over there uh, let us let us look at the title you know of the presentation it says communication skills in pedagogy now it should be read as importance of communication skills in pedagogy pedagogy is the art of teaching i mean teaching is an art it's a skill as well it's a god's gift as well sometimes so uh, we should read it as importance of communication skills effective communication skills in pedagogy in the art of teaching in the classroom scenario so that is where exactly we should really look into this ppt in fact 
just look at the title of uh, you know this ppt communication skills in pedagogy also there is a bottom line there is a tagline for it. it says the heart of the art of teaching why not you know uh, communication is everything for teacher for the student rather so that is the heart of the art of teaching why not you know uh, unless we equip ourselves you know in making our job much more emphatic probably whatever we want to convey will never reach you know the target audience the target audience invariably you know are our student community so therefore i have given a tagline for this uh, communication skills in pedagogy the heart of the art of teaching so it's a very humble presentation my dear friends but before we get into the first slide rather uh, i should really spend on uh, you know the basics the elementary aspect why i chose this topic though i was also you know uh, someone who got the consent from the college as well they wanted me to you know speak a few words on this topic so they had given me the freedom to you know to have a choice why not you know have a choice like communication skills in, i mean i must admit i must confess you know in front of my audience today so in the last couple of weeks maybe in 3 4 weeks i have given you know uh, speeches i have given fdp as well uh, more or less on the same topic if i have some friends you know amongst the audience here amongst the participants you know who might have come across my speeches elsewhere if i sound repetitive please pardon me please pardon me but i believe i believe this would be a wonderful you know session for all of us rather uh, my dear friends look at this bonding look at this bonding dear friends what is this bonding what is this relationship what is this rapport all about we have so many relationships in society we have so many bonding episodes in society look at the bonding between the parents and the children the kids it has a very distinct style of functioning look at the bonding the rapport the relationship between you know the employer and the employee look at the bonding between the buyer and the seller if you know we have some commerce friends here if we have some management friends here they would be extremely happy to hear words like you know employee employer buyer seller all these things you know really are very keywords also there is one more relationship which really means a lot for which we have all assembled here on in webinar now this is the relationship between the teacher and the student or you can convert that into the teacher and the taught now it could be anyone the teacher sometimes you know teaches certain things to the student and the student in turn teaches a lot to the teacher himself or herself so therefore the relationship the bonding the rapport the understanding of you know the teacher and the student happens to be the most important the key feature is how are you going to strengthen this bond rather how are we going to strengthen this relationship how are we going to take up you know this relationship very seriously to take the same thing to the next level as well now one aspect which can strengthen which can work in our favor is communication skills dear friends you know if i speak really well if i write very well if i you know act very well definitely i have no reason whatsoever to believe that you know i'm a good teacher and i'm also wanted by the students that depends on the body language that depends on the verbal communication that depends on the non verbal communication that depends on how i present myself before the students and that depends mostly on communication skills the words which i use the diction the vocabulary the voice the action how i make my you know uh, body language have an impact on the teachers and on the students most importantly everything matters so therefore i thought when i was given the choice to make you know a very suitable to give a suitable topic for this uh, ppt for this webinar i chose communication skills in pedagogy well let me talk about pedagogy in the ensuing slides but let me get into my first slide dear friends so let me have the first slide please the next one well you know you you know you are looking at uh, uh, my first slide though my opening slide i mean slide had you know a topic and the name of the present that was the opening slide and this is the slide one now what does this carry this carries the workplace of the teacher and the student now this is the classroom 
Now the classroom could be called the karma bhumi. I mean, the where we have to actually deliver the goods. Now this is where I am expected to be, you know, uh, a savior sometimes, a learner sometimes, uh, you know, a facilitator sometimes. I mean, as a teacher, I will have to don many roles as well. So that's why I call this classroom as the karma bhumi. Now the classroom could be a real one or a virtual one or most importantly sometimes you know we aspire for an ideal classroom most of the teachers want an ideal classroom well i should have had great students i should have had you know students who can understand my pulse vice versa i must be able to understand the pulse of my students as well what they need from me so sometimes it could be a real classroom where you have some 80, 100 or 150 students in front of us or 10 students in front of us. Or we have a blackboard or a whiteboard where we have a piece of chalk or some pens there to be used. And where we have an ideal classroom as well. It could be a virtual classroom. A couple of years ago, we were very, very adept with these virtual online classrooms as well. Now, the next point is it should be learner centric. It should be student friendly. It should be highly engaging and evolving. I mean, what is this evolving? I mean, you might have understood uh, the meaning of learner centric. Now, every time I say learner, learner could be the teacher. Learner could be a student as well. Anyone for that matter. Every time I get into a classroom, I will have an intention to convey something to my students. I also enter the classroom with another intention of learning something, of taking something out of their books as well, out of their day to day life as well. So that is how, you know, a win win situation will be arrived at. So it has to be student friendly. I mean, you know, uh, I'm not saying that, you know, you, you should have, you know, a very lenient way of conducting yourself in a classroom. It has to be student friendly. Otherwise, the communication becomes very, very tough and highly engaging. I mean, every time we see as a language teacher, I have seen, you know, in my own classes, uh, it's always more often than not one way teaching. A teacher will be either reading those passages from the lesson or if I'm a commerce teacher and accounts teacher, I will be working few sums on the board. Or if I if there is a lab classroom, if there is an experiment going on, the teacher and along with the lab attendant will be doing something and more or less, you know, you will have students either listening to your words, taking down their notes, looking at the board or looking at your experiment. That is most likely to happen, whereas it should be highly engaging and it should be evolving as well. Every time you have to evolve new techniques, new methodologies, new ways of engaging the students as well. Unless you make, unless you make even the last student who is sitting in the last bench, you will never call yourself a teacher, not a successful teacher, but a teacher yourself. That is the primordial factor which we have to look at, you know, very seriously. Now, how is going to happen? How are we going to turn, you know, make this turn around rather? It has to be an interaction based classroom. There should be interaction between the teacher and the taught. Any classroom, it could be a physics class, chemistry class, accounts class, principles of management class, or an English class, or a Kannada class, for that matter, any language class. Unless there is an, an, you know, an interesting interaction between the teacher and the student, perhaps there lies the failure of both. As a teacher, I'm a failure. As a learner, they are a failure, rather. So that is exactly the point where communication skills, communication skills will enable you very quickly, very instantly, how to make interaction, how to make inroads into the mindset of the students as well. Any person who is sitting very passive, well, that is how a discouraging atmosphere will take its birth. That is exactly the place where you will see the birth of a discouraging and I'm interested, you know, disinterested, you know, students there. So how are you going to make it interaction based classroom when you know what is needed for the students? That's why I have put the next point there. It has to be a need based pedagogy. It has to be a need based teaching, need based learning. 
I mean, you may ask me a question, which we will be doing at the end of the session as well, I believe. At this juncture, you may ask me, what are the needs of a student? Please ask me, what aren't the needs of the student, rather? Everywhere they need, you know, the help of someone, not just as a teacher, but as a friend, as a guide, as a counselor, as a, you know, a pedagogue, as a teacher, as a friend. No, you need them. You need, you know, uh, uh, the, stu the te students need the teacher at every juncture, rather. Sometimes the teacher also needs the students at every juncture of his lecture. So there should be need based pedagogy. We are not here just to rely upon the textbook stuff or, you know, uh, the syllabus given for the, the for the subject, the allotted number of hours for the subject. You know, that's not just the criteria. You have many other needs as well. Just try to understand what is required for a student. What is the strength and weak point of your student rather? Then probably you will be able to understand what is the best mode of teaching? What should be the best style of functioning in a classroom? So how can we do that? Focus on the skill sets. Absolutely right. I mean, you know very well, you will, you will agree with me when I say this. We are preparing our students. It's a great responsibility. I must say this, my dear friends. It's a great responsibility on our shoulders. You know, we must really understand one thing. We are preparing our students for the life ahead, not just their profession, not just their careers, not just for the industry, not just for the market needs. They also need to be taught how to lead their life as well. So it has to be life oriented. So there are many skill sets that are required. It should be it could be their communication skills. It could be their language skills. It could be their you know writing skills. It could be their organizational skills. It could be their leadership skills as well. It could be their soft skills, how to use a computer, how to conduct an event, how to organize an event, how to take up the responsibility, how to take up the mantle, how to own something. That is the skill set we are talking about. It's not just it's not just reading, writing, listening and all those things. No. So there are much more than that. Look at the last point on the slide, dear friends. What is a teacher? A teacher is a pedagogue. He or she should know the art and science of teaching. Whatever could be the subject, whatever could be the subject, unless you consider yourself as a master of something, Probably I cannot face my students comfortably with a trustworthy eyes. You know, that that improves my body language as well. The moment I enter my classroom with all sorts of stuff with me considered as very much required for my teaching, unless I, I make myself potent enough, I will not be called as a pedagogue, my dear friends. So I am a facilitator as well. How many times you have done, you know, the, you have done the role of a facilitator. Sometimes the teachers will have to just allow, will have to just allow the students to perform themselves, function themselves at times if possible. If the strength is, you know, something which can, which can permit you to do that, sometimes you have to facilitate that. You must facilitate that. And then you are a guide, you are a friend. You are a moderator. For example, if you know if you can call some of the students to speak a few words on a topic, rather any topic, any topic from physics, chemistry, and accounting on some theory subject, on some experiment, on some historical facts, on some current affairs, that is where a moderator comes into picture from a teacher. Then you must be a listener as well. Unless a teacher is one of the best listeners. You cannot call himself or herself, you know, a teacher at all. So we must be, you know, very careful enough to lend our ears for whatever the student wants to say, wants to convey. Doesn't matter. Sometimes, you know, the students will come out with some you know, uh, unwanted things, unrelated things as well, irrelevant things. Still, a teacher, a teacher should make every student, a teacher should make every student feel his own presence. You know, no one should be felt, you know, left out. No one should be felt okay. out in the classroom. And that is the key word. You should also be a demonstrator and an educator as well. Uh, sometimes, you know, you will have to, you know, demonstrate your skills. Unless the teacher is motivated, 
the teacher cannot motivate the students that sometimes you have to show a demo of what you possess in you that that could be your oratory skills your speaking skills as well uh, how best you can use the words which you know and that is where you will make the students understand the value of interaction the importance of using language as well and the importance of you know standing and addressing the audience that is the first important and foremost thing and many students say perhaps have you know uh, come across that student saying that we have a stage fear how are we going to how are we going to just do away with that element of you know fear element and that is by being a demonstrator so we are here to educate them as well uh, let me request my friends to go to the next slide please well the objectives my dear friends uh, please make no mistake the objectives of this title i mean what does this title contain communication skills in pedagogy what do we you know intend to have as objectives what is the what are the objectives we want communication for you know information we should have skills for persuasion as well now how are you going to persuade your students of course you will have ample opportunity time classes as well to inform your students but how best can we persuade our students for example if there is a need for persuasion if there is a need for convincing a student about what you had just made a mention about how are we going to do that i mean for that we need we ourselves need a great skill set as well so therefore one of the major objectives of this title is that is persuasion and then we need to educate people as well for example how can we deny the importance of the stuff given in the textbook the textbook or the syllabus is made with a purpose i mean there are different levels of understanding there are different stages you know where it will be looked at in different classes in different semesters so we need to make a student understand what he needs to understand then therefore we are here to educate them look at the next point dear teachers appreciation how can we miss out this wonderful quality of appreciation how can we miss out you know don't miss out even a single moment even a single moment of you know appreciating even a small thing from your student from your kid you know that will make a world of good for such students one word of appreciation one you know writing on the board that you know this student has done this good work you know today or yesterday that will boost the confidence of not only that student even it will you know uh, you know influence it will have impact on others as well so therefore for appreciating some you know you need communication skills as well and that is where uh, you should have it could be your telephone as well while texting you know your words for that matter in place of congratulations very recently i had one of my students getting or scoring 10th rank in the university i did not just believe in sending you know only congratulatory word i thought of adding some more words to it because i knew him as well i had known him for several years so i thought let me you know do my bit to whatever he has achieved he has achieved something great he has got a rank so a word or two not just a word or two maybe good words good sentences on him or her would do a world of you know change as well so sometimes students need teachers as counselors as well we need to counsel our children at times i'm not saying you know it should be on every day basis as well sometimes they need the role of a teacher doing a different role of a counselor as well so for that we need to have good communication skills we need to train them we need to motivate them as well by reading out some extra texts as well not just the text uh, well i must say this uh, a text is just a pretext dear teachers a text is just a pretext it is just a tool for, to do all those important things in the classroom but we should go beyond the text at times and therefore we need to give them some motivation lessons as well make them listen to some wonderful speeches as well and of course though students may not like this last point advice well if the advice is given in such a manner where you know they don't feel offended they don't feel get bored then probably 
you are doing a yeoman service to the community of students. So that is how this slide, you know, uh, looks at uh, objectives, information, persuasion, and others, dear friends. Let me go to the next slide, dear friends. Well, uh, the title conveys us two things. One is communication skills. The other one is pedagogy. Now, this pedagogy is a very novel word. It, it's, a, it's a very, you know, uh, 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 noteworthy word, my dear friends, to be used. Uh, more often than not, we have heard, we have listened to many speeches where pedagogy, you know, has, you know, come across, has, we have come across that. Uh, what is this pedagogy all about? It involves, you know, methods of teaching and learning. Simple, simple as that. You know, for example, there are conventional methods of teaching and learning. What are the conventional methods of teaching and learning? As I said earlier, it could be a blackboard or a whiteboard. You have an ideal classroom. You know, you have some infrastructure, benches. You know, you have chairs, you have tables, you know, you have a chair and you have a bunch of students in front of you. And also you have something, some tools to write on the board. This is a very conventional method of teaching and learning. Also, you have the, you know, the tools like books as well. And what are the modern methods of teaching and learning? You have modern methods we have just come across, which we are going through right now. It's an online session today. Sometimes, you know, we have to work in a virtual classroom, dear friends. And that was a real challenge, I tell you. And I must salute all my dear teachers for having, you know, conducted those wonderful online sessions. And though it was quite difficult for the students to comprehend, that was the need of the hour. That was the need of the art, and that was quite challenging. Now, what is the next one? It determines student-faculty relationship. Why not? But it also augurs new academic practices. Now, what do I mean this? You know, what do what do I mean by saying it augurs new academic practices? Uh, for example, some two or three years ago, we never thought that you know a mobile phone would be a matter of necessity in a classroom scenario but today it's a matter of reality it's a tool which teachers suggest you know the students to use to make the best use of in the classroom in fact i look at myself there i want my students to open their cell phones and you know use youtube for listening to some wonderful speeches of great personalities and that is what we call academic practices we have to, we have to. And sometimes, you know, we have to make these presentations in the classroom. Sometimes, you know, students will engage themselves doing seminars and presentations themselves. These are the new academic pursuits. And that is where pedagogy is evolving, is evolving. Broadly, it's the art and science of teaching. It's the art and science of teaching, isn't it, dear friends? Just like, you know, you learn music, you learn dance, you learn painting, you learn how to, you know, run, how to swim. Teaching is something which we have to make it ours. It should be considered an art, dear friends. It should be considered an art, not just art. It's a science. It's a science. And any teacher, any individual who would want to become, you know, a fantastic, you know, person, whom the students love the most will have to learn both the art and science of teaching. And that is why pedagogy is called the art and science of teaching. Now, understanding curriculum and presenting it. I just, you know, made a mention about this need based pedagogy. You should know what is required for my dear students today for this semester in this chapter. If I'm doing some lesson on management accounting, if I'm doing some sums in mathematics, or if I'm doing some, you know, wonderful experiments in the laboratory, or if I'm doing some data analytics, or if I'm doing uh, one of those, uh, you know, dramatic scenes in the drama, or if I'm doing a Shakespearean poetry, sonnet number 106, I should know very well what is the curriculum, what is the syllabus, and how am I going to present it rather? Now, I'm the boss, I'm the monitor, I'm the Lord inside the classroom. I can do whatever I want as long as what I do has got a positive impact on my students. I can make the best use of what I want to use. So therefore, I say, I say, you know, while presenting it, you should know very well whether or not you're doing good for the student community. Now, what does it involve? It involves teaching, it involves guidance, instruction, analysis, 
critical thinking and appreciation couple of things have got repeated but not without meaning and you know suggestivity so you know you need to have this analytical mind as well as teachers uh, what do you mean by analysis you know uh, we call it vishleshana or vishleshane in kannada uh, you need to know each and every student uh, very closely very closely you should know how to read the minds of students what they need and what they don't need from you sometimes you know we have to make them learn we have to make them unlearn certain times at times as well so therefore analytical you know teaching or approach is a must in our pedagogy as well it's a responsibility that should stimulate the idea of learning every time a teacher gets on to the you know podium or for the matter of stage the stage is set for the teacher to stimulate you know to uh, to to make something you know very very useful for the student community every time every time you meet the same students of course you know in a year you will meet the same batches same faces every day but every classroom has to be a different one you will have to enter with a renewed vigor with a different intention other than the regular ones other than the regular ones and that is where uh, you know the pedagogy comes into picture next slide please well what are the approaches i mean this is a uh, uh, probably anybody you know who would like to know something about pedagogy some of the approaches this is available on google as well my dear friends many uh, you know great uh, you know writers have written uh, some very good books on this as well uh, probably you will be able to surf you know them on the net as well but just for the you know convenience of this session just to have a glimpse of what are the different approaches there are many but i have just you know summed up quite a number of them rather look at the first one first approach to pedagogy what should be the way what should be the first approach it should be constructive uh, well what it means is getting knowledge through direct experience i mean uh, you know uh, that's why i said the relationship the bonding between the teacher and the student happens to be the most sacred one the most sacred one it has to be a very constructive you know foundation built on a very constructive foundation and every time you will gain by experience as well it's a direct experience you know you have a direct contact you know face to face communication face to face you know uh, you know uh, identity with you know the students as well so that is something which is called constructive every time you construct a meaning rather construct some you know utility factor for the teaching and then the next one is collaborative coming together of two people it promotes deep learning through discussion social interaction uh, that is where i feel uh, communication skills come into picture you know it has to be done in a collaborative manner uh, for example if teacher wants to do certain good things well he alone cannot do that without the intervention without the interest you know from the student side and vice versa if students want to learn something from the teacher they alone cannot do that without having one of the best teachers useful teachers in the classroom so therefore in order to have this deep learning on any given topic in any given subject dear friends it has to be done through discussion through brainstorming as well through you know chatting as well you know by raising questions as well so this social interaction social engineering we call it you know it happens only through collaborative you know uh, techniques or approach to pedagogy uh, next we have uh, integrative one you know we have to blend our ideas and experience with the ideas and experience of the students there so we always go together hand in hand with each other and that is where the success of you know the relationship you know exists look at the next one reflective you know approach to pedagogy this is a self learning evaluation and think uh, how many times have we have we really evaluated our efforts our meaningful efforts to make you know our teaching better and better and better than the best and how many time have we learned you know about this self learning for example now i go to a classroom today you know i i believe and it comes to my experience that i was not up to the mark today my students were not proactive 
They did not give me the vibes which I expected from them. Go back home, come back to staff room and just start thinking about that. How best you can get back to the same classroom the next time, the next day if possible. And that happens only when you learn about yourself. So that is called self-learning. For example, the same quality will have to be transferred even to the student community. Make them learn. Make them learn a lot of things other than the textbook stuff, other than, you know, something which is written on the blackboard. May let them learn most of the things, you know, as well. And let them know what is this investigative approach. They must really uh, have a sort of probing mind. Now, this probing mind, in other words, called investigative approach. What went wrong? Many of the students, you know, during examination or after examination on the day of the result, they will come to you. They will come to you with some doubts and they will ask you what are the reasons, you know, for getting this average result or failed result or this less marks, this and that. So you should know how to have this student centered and, you know, investigative approach there. So this is, uh, you know, something like, you know, a, a glimpse of approaches to pedagogy. Now, next uh, slide, please. Well, uh, thanks to my dear friends there. Now, this is about another aspect in the title, the most important one, though we spoke a lot on pedagogy. Now, this is called communication. Well, well, I don't have to, uh, you know, uh, say a lot about communication, the basics, the elementary aspects of communication. Still, uh, nothing wrong in revisiting these points on communication. What is this communication? It's the process of sharing the message that produces response. That's important. Uh, well, whatever you convey, whatever you try to inform, will have to produce some response. Response could be positive, response could be negative, but it has to produce response. Sometimes a grin on the face of the student also is a response. Sometimes a smile on the student's face also is a response. So any process of sharing the message that produces a response can be considered communication. Look at the next one. Transmission of information from one person, group, company, organization to another. Very simple one. Uh, many times, you know, we write letters, we send messages over phone. We also tend to, you know, send emails as well. We also speak face to face. You know, sometimes, you no, know, I will be the sender. Someone else will be the receiver. Receiver will start sending the message. I will be the receiver. So these things do happen. Transmission of information is communication, plain and simple. Look at the next one. Another simple, you know, aspect of communication, exchange of ideas expressions feelings thoughts through words and actions i mean how many times have we come across a situation where we fail or we have felt that you know we did not understand the ideas properly we did not give room for expressions properly we did not really understand the feelings of the students the other and thoughts through words and actions how many times have you felt like that or sometimes you know we ignore the importance of that aspect because of our busy schedule as well because of our other responsibilities in the colleges so teachers they do have different you know responsibilities other than you know being as a teacher they do have other responsibilities in the staff room you know with the management with the principal you know in the office as well outside the classroom outside the college so i know you cannot really get into these aspects quite conveniently, but it's a must exchange of ideas, expressions, feelings, etc. Now, it is also the social process by which people in a specific context construct meaning. For example, a teacher and a student in a classroom scenario will, will discuss something in a classroom scenario but the same student and the teacher if they happen to meet at a marketplace near a bus stop or outside the college or in a cinema hall or in a in an auditorium or in a bus or in a metro their communication will be entirely different but notwithstanding one thing i mean you should never miss out the rapport the smiling faces exchanged that's the wonderful communication which we all have to understand. It's a social process and it's going to be a social behavior as well. Sometimes smiling face will also be a, symbol. It's a symbolic behavior as well. Dear friends, 
and what else is communication it's a dynamic human activity it's not passive it's not sedate it's not slow it's not meaningless it has to be a dynamic human activity come on my dear teachers my dear friends when animals have when animals have supreme communication skills they understand each other by making certain body movements by making some sounds distinct sounds from distinct places what if you know animals can do that birds can do that why not man so that's why i put it you know with a purpose there dynamic human activity which brings about changes in attitude perception point of view every time you know i could be a teacher with experience of five years or 10 years or 20 years or 30 years that's not the matter here now what is the change that you have brought in yourself and what is the change that you have brought in amongst your students rather is there a change in perception perception of life perception of what is right and what is wrong what is your point of view have you do you have a stance do you have a definite you know stance about a particular aspect of society do you have a social responsibility or a social stance as well or a political stance so it's it's another responsibility of uh, the teacher as well how to make uh, the students more socially responsible politically aware as well morally righteous at times so these are different aspects of communication and that is you know the core idea of communication dear friends you know let us go to the next slide if we can have hmm well very simple slide uh, we can just run through this types of communication perhaps all my teachers know very well you might have come across this uh, in number of times you have formal communication informal communication you have verbal in verbal we have oral communication and you know uh, you have uh, you know uh, written communication you can communicate using words you can communicate you know either while speaking or writing you can also uh, text messages as well you can also communicate non-verbally without using words you can just communicate with your expressions by waving hands you know by just you know uh, making some movements of your body parts you can make some neck movement as well expressions and gestures which i will be dealing with in the next coming slides and you know you have business communication corporate communication you have organizational communication you 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 have you know social communication you have political communication as well there are many many types of communication one way two way uh, you know downward and upward especially for our commerce teachers you know they understand it in any company in any organization or office there will be a hierarchy there will be a top level management next you have mid-level management and then the bottom level management sometimes you know you will have to communicate from upward to downward downward to upward you know you have lateral communication diagonal so all these you know matter a lot matter a lot sometimes you know we we talk about semi formal communication as well semi formal is somewhat you know both formal and you know informal as well so uh, it is just a, a list of types of communication well my dear friends uh, we know very well how to make the best use of our words our diction our vocabulary in all these given types as well so let's quickly go on to the next slide well uh, well from uh, the english perspective from the language perspective uh, probably uh, i would say uh, for any uh, teacher to get the confidence of you know the students uh, you should really look into these four aspects you know lsrw we call language teachers know more about this lsrw listening speaking reading you know writing as well uh, these skills include you know all these four uh, we should have excellent listening skills as well. We should have exceptional speaking skills, beautiful reading skills, my dear friends, not to miss out that. And, you know, you should have some great writing skills. Now, what are the uses of these four skills, my dear friends? Uh, you know, I, I told you communication skills, skills in pedagogy, in a classroom scenario, all these four will come into picture. Unless you have, you know, uh, your ears you know which we can lend for others rather you will be doing injustice to your listening ability 
You will not be able to do justice to your teaching in you know, 4A uh, unless you have listened to the student's requirement. Uh, the moment you start speaking, the student will start receiving as well. The moment you speak some sensible things, the students will start receiving them. Sometimes uh, students may not be responding immediately. They will take some time. They will definitely take some time to respond to your call. But unless and until you make yourself a very well equipped speaker of your subject, of your concept, well, success will never be, you know, your relationships. Right? So we should have excellent reading quotients. For example, uh, I have come across uh, the national education policy, the new policy which you know the government of India had introduced, and for the first time, the Karnataka government has introduced in the university curriculum as well across the universities and colleges of Karnataka. Uh, there is a special mention about reading and writing, broadly LSRW in this you know NEP. Uh, it should be very action oriented. It should be function, uh, functional oriented, and it should be with all these LSRW quotients. How many times have we understood the benefits of reading passages loudly or for that matter silently? For example, I would say, I would say as a language teacher, if I have English teachers, you know, in the session, there is a huge benefit of, you know, making your students excellent readers of the passages excellent readers of the text or concepts especially if they can read out loudly in front of everyone that will have great benefits for themselves and for others as well you know the moment you start reading loudly it will fall on your ears your sounding will fall on your ears as well so therefore that is the greatest benefit you will come to know whether or not you have good pronunciation good accent good sound good emphasis as well good stress of the syllable so everything comes into picture when you start reading and how can we miss out the importance of the last one writing because today students will be tested on the basis of their writing skills in the examination it's not oral test it's not listening text my dear friends it's not reading text well they read the question paper and then they will have to write their answers in their answer script and how are we going to motivate students to earn some good marks, good grades in the examination? It's only by improving their writing skills. Now, how can we do that? Well, if I say, if I say, you know, they should really learn language in such a way that they should be masters of the language only by writing and writing and writing. So that is where they will get acquainted with new terms, the spelling, everything. And that is how they will come to know how to write effectively as well. For example, uh, if at all you want to be different from others, you should make them learn some of the figuratives, you know, which you will have to make them understand how to write in a very distinct language, style of writing, a flowery language, beautiful way of writing skill can be discussed, you know. In this one. Uh, let, it, let us go to the next slide, dear friends. Now, uh, this one is also, you know, another lead to communication. It can be through different forms as well. Uh, there are some technical terms used there. The first one is uh, kinesics. Now, what is this kinesics? I mean, it's a short line given there. It's a scientific study of gestures and other body movements. Uh, Ray Bird Whistle of America was the first exponent of that. He has, you know, one of, he was one of the exponents of this kinesics as well. Now. Have we understood, you know, the gestures, the importance of gestures and other body movements as well uh, while teaching, while standing before the students? I must know very well how I look like and how am I using my you know, hands, my neck, my eyes, you know, my cheeks, or, you know, my waist as well. Or am I really using the stage properly? You know, if I'm, you know, addressing a gathering, say, of 100 or 150 or 200 or 500, I must I must make myself beautifully equipped with these gestures. That is what we call kinesics, dear friends. Now there is another one, proxemics. Uh, proxemics deals with the proximity. Proximity means it's the study of you know effects of physical distance. For example, you know if I'm a teacher in a classroom, I must make myself available for each and every student. Well. You know, if it's a classroom, say of uh, some four rows, you know, 
I must make myself available, go and reach out to each and every student there, make the proximity really matter, go near the student, talk to him, talk to her meaningfully, you know, just make the student understand that, you know, the teacher is not a believer in maintaining distance. That is something which you can work out for your own relationship with the student community as well. So I make this point with a great sense of responsibility because I have been a practitioner of this wonderful proxemics myself. So I go to every student during the session, during the teaching session, I make it a point to go to every person there because every student needs the teacher. And every teacher needs the students as well. For example, you know, if you are able to know the names of your students, that would be, you know, a shot in the arm, my dear friends. I would call it a shot in the arm. So if you know the name of the student, you know, of course, it requires some effort from your side. Definitely it's possible. If you call the student by her name or his name, that would really suddenly, you know, get the attention of the student. Now, the next one is haptics. Haptics is a special touch behavior. For example, you know, if a student comes out with flying colors, you know, one pat on his back, you know, one, you know, touch of assurance for that matter, one shaking of hand, you know, one holding hands, firm hold of something will send hundred signals there, you know, will really get, you know, wonderful atmosphere around that. For example, if you just clap, my dear friends, for all those efforts made by the students, that really will will go a long way in deciding the relationship between the teacher and the student communication can be done through applause through appreciation through this touch behavior as well now the next one is para language uh, well we'll be looking at that even the next uh, slide as well how communication is done articulation what is articulation i should know very well when to speak what and how and why I mean, you should know how to deal with students because students are heterogeneous. They come from different backgrounds. They come from different cultural background, language, you know, background as well. They come from different states, sometimes different countries, sometimes. So I must have a different strategy sometimes to be very articulative. Rather. And I must know very well how to pronounce as well my language, the pitch, the volume, the pause, the tone, speed, everything. I'll be discussing this in the next slide and appearance sometimes matters. For example, you know, if I look unkempt, if I look unpleasant, no matter how scholarly I am, sometimes today's students may not look at you with a sense of belief, with a sense of assurance. So therefore, your personal appearance sometimes matters a lot and it goes a distance in deciding the fortunes of your relationship between the students and the teachers. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please, dear friends. Yeah, it's a body language. Uh, that's another communication skill that we have. It's a nonverbal communication. We don't use words here. Huh. Sometimes, you know, even in verbal communication, we take the help of body language. You know, even while, you know, speaking to you now, even while addressing you now, I'm using my, you know, neck, my head, you know, my eyes, my, my hands here. You can see the movement of my cheekbones as well. You can see, you know, nodding of my head. So every time I make this happen, uh, I'm using body language for the rescue of, you know, myself as well to face such a good audience like you and this has to happen even in the classroom and alone body language is a non-verbal communication it's a communication through eyes hand neck head fingers shoulders different parts of the body uh you know it's a movement of these parts that convey message at times uh when students say something when students come out with their responses for my questions i being a teacher if I just have a grin on my face, if I have a frown on my face, if I have, you know, a feeling of ecstasy on my face, that can be shown very well. That can be shown very evidently through my body language. So for this, we need to have four important characteristic features. Number one is eye contact. Number two is gesture. Number three is posture. And number four is voice. And how to have this positive eye contact? That's what I said. 
you must never miss out even a single student in your class it could be a student of some 100 or 80 or 10 or 120 or 150 no matter who every section of the crowd every section of the audience must be looked at with a positive intent and that is done with a positive gesture you can use your expressions for your benefit and the way you stand the way you sit the way you walk is what we call posture posture means nothing but positioning yourself dear teachers positioning yourself where you stand how you stand how you walk in and how you walk out everything matters for the students because uh, you know they are very impressionistic sometimes the students the youngsters they are very impressionistic and you can make that impression happen quite a quite in detail as well and the last one the voice uh, with regard to voice you know there is under slide but you must have a voice which can convey your message you know if at all it is a verbal communication it has to reach your target audience specifically with a definite you know intention made with an intention and of course you should have good facial expression that's a reputation anyhow dear friends uh well let us go to the next one and this uh, will be uh, the last couple of uh, slides the next slide please hmm. communication techniques you know these are some of uh, uh, the vocal communication techniques i mean this is required for all the teachers anyhow especially uh, those teachers who do a lot of lecturing a lot of speaking in the classroom I mean, look at the voice, look at the quality, look at the volume, pitch, rate of delivery, pronunciation, the pause. Every aspect, every point here discussed, you know, has got its own importance and validity, utility as well. You know, for effective communication, you should have good voice. And the quality of your voice should also be different, my dear friends. For example, uh, if I'm a language teacher, I should know how to, you know, maneuver how to modulate my voice you know in such a manner that the quality should look very distinct for example if i am doing a, a scene from all my sons a drama a famous drama i should have a different quality the texture of my way i mean voice if i am doing a shakespearean macbeth you know if i am describing a wonderful scene there the opening scene i should have a distinct quality as well if i am doing a poetry a romantic poetry i must have a different you know a voice as well and the volume also matters, you know, the degree of loudness and softness. These are different techniques, my dear friends, with which you can equip yourself, uh, enable yourself to become a good, you know, most wanted teacher for your student. Uh, you should know how to have this pitch as well. I know we're not talking about singing here, not necessarily for music, not necessarily for singing, even for lecturing, even for teaching. We need to understand the importance of pitch, the degree of high and low in our voice. So the rate of delivery, the speed, the pace with which we speak also matters. For example, I might have come across, I might have read some hundreds and thousands of books. I might have, you know, read about so many people, but, but unless I have a very slow and steady delivery of the speech, well, nothing will be possible there. I must have good pronunciation. For example, uh, there is always a doubt between the pronunciation between schedule and schedule, dear friends. Uh, well, you know, you, you have two Englishes here. You have three Englishes, multiple forms of English here were, you know, worked out in the entire globe. One is American style. The other one is British style. I mean, the other one is Indian English style, I mean, uh, style as well. So no need to worry about schedule or schedule. Both are absolutely correct in their own way, schedule and schedule. So therefore, uh, we should make our students understand what are the different aspects of language, the pronunciation as well. Uh, for example, I, I would like to give you a sentence. I mean, that's a wonderful, enjoyable sentence. For example, look at this sentence. Uh, I did not steal your purse yesterday. This is a sentence. Now. This can be understood in a different way by making an emphasis on each and every word at different times. For example, if I use this sentence by emphasizing on the word I, look at my sentence now. I did not steal your purse yesterday. There is an emphasis, there is a stress on the first word. 
I did not steal your purse. It was someone else. It means the other. Look at the next one. I did not steal your purse yesterday. The importance is given to the word steal there. I did not steal your purse yesterday. I just took it. I mean, that is, you know, as simple as that. The sentence is one and the same. Every time you emphasize on a different word, it produces a different meaning. You know, it, it constructs a different meaning. Uh, for example, you, you may also, uh, you know, emphasize on another word. I did not steal your purse yesterday. I stole someone else's. That's another meaning, you know, uh, which you can construct, you know, in these sentences as well. And exactly that is the whole idea of communication skills. That's the whole idea of having interaction with the students, you know, dealing with pronunciation, constructing meaning as well. Uh, I also remember one more sentence, uh, you know, uh, draw a triangle with two lines. When you ask, someone, can you draw a triangle with two lines? More often than not, you will get the answer. No, we cannot draw a triangle with two lines. But you can also understand the question in a different way. You can. You can draw a triangle with two lines. You can first draw a triangle and then draw two lines just next to the triangle. That is how you can understand even the language better. So a question can be understood in a different way. A question can be understood in a different way as well. So that is how language comes into picture. You know, stress will become, you know, will be coming into picture. Look at the last point there, pause. When to give pauses. For example, Swami Vivekananda, in his speech, you know, at the Parliament of Religions, World Parliament of Religions in Chicago, whenever he addressed, you know, I mean, when he spoke to, when he addressed the people there, the audience there, he said, sisters and brothers of America, there was a round of applause, you know, he gave a pause there. And every time we deliver our speech, we do our lecturing in the classroom, there has to be a pause at brief intervals, because that is a potential weapon and teacher will empower himself or herself with this very, very impactful weapon called pause as well. Uh, let me go to my last slide, my dear friends, uh, the conclusion, the conclusion. Uh, overall, we have spent, you know, I think I have taken the more than one hour, I believe, most likely not. Let me sum up in five minutes now today. Uh, Importance of communication skills in pedagogy is imminent. That that cannot be you know mistaken here. That cannot be outrightly rejected. Communication skills are absolutely essential. It's not essential. It's imminent. It is needful. It's needful, dear friends. And communication is the heart and soul of art of teaching. Well, that was the bottom line. That was the tagline. You know, in the opening slide, uh, that is the heart of the art of uh, you know teaching. Both the teacher and the taught are contributors here. You know, it's not the sole contribution of one which really should matter here. It has to be, it has to be both the teacher and the taught. The student could be a teacher at times, the teacher could be a student at times. What is the process here? Exploring and experimenting. Both can be done with the help of communication skills. Uh, preparing students for the real life situations is a priority. Why not? We are not here just to prepare the students to write in the examination hall, score good marks, enable them to get into the market or industry, get ready for the profession. That's not the end all. That's not the be all and end all. It has to be for the life. Greater challenges ahead. So a teacher learns a lot in the company of students and vice versa. So it's a win win situation for both. So all the skills of communication will be tested inside and outside the classroom. I mean, that's what I said. Even coming out of the classroom, the, the mood of the classroom will still linger behind you. And the student may come to you in the staff room or he may even contact you over telephone. And that is where the relationship and the bonding you know, gets continued as well. My dear friends, uh, Next one, the last slide, that is the thank you slide. Dear friends, uh, uh, well, if I can have that, the last slide, thank you slide, wherein, uh, you know, you have uh, my sincere thanks. And I'm really grateful to the, the organizers of this wonderful webinar. Thanks to the management of Janat Jyoti Degree College, the principal, the staff, especially my friends there, 
professor siban tiri kulkarni deepa madam and you know professor hanumant raya and all my dear teachers you know who, who have been so patient enough to listen to my you know words and also uh, thanks for lending your ears to me and thank you so much for that and if you have uh, any questions well also you can have uh, my address there you have a feedback you know address there as well and once again thank you so much for the opportunity i'm really expecting questions from you thank you sir thank you so much uh, really wonderful session sir it was uh, very informative so many aspects you have covered like uh, communication is the basic uh, basic essential of uh, the human being santadi like uh, uh, the process of communication it may be the kinesics proxemics haptics para language you have not only stressed on the verbal communication as well as the non verbal communication really really it is very uh, helpful to us and uh, you have even covered which are the four pillars of our communication that is the reading writing uh, uh, speaking and uh, listening and uh, listening is actually it is must actually uh, and uh, listening uh, uh, makes the speaking uh, speaking skills enhanced uh, according to my opinion wonderful session sir really appreciate you and Thank hope you. it was uh, a quite useful session for all our participants too uh, it is uh, really an honor to have you with us and uh, so uh, with all that uh, i wanted to go ahead with the question and answer session so those uh, who want to ask the questions kindly raise your hands we will unmute them and uh, already we have unmuted kindly uh, unmute your mic and you can ask the question to rasiman <laughs> sir uh, definitely will answer to your questions uh, your questions dear participants yes good afternoon sir very good afternoon madam i am smita here from rvd college yes yeah. Namaste, madam. Namaste, sir. So it was a really wonderful session. But uh, when you talk, when you say that you know good listening and you know how, how when it is a webinar like this, how do you know that people are uh, you know good listeners? <laughs> of course, when we are in front of the students, we will get to know whether they are listening to us or not. But when it comes to the sessions like this, how how do you? What is your opinion about it, sir? Uh, well, in fact, before you actually asked that question to me, Smita, Madam, I was just going through the messages that were, you know, that were actually displayed here. I saw you were questioned there. I saw you were apprehension there. Were we good listeners, sir? And uh, you know, you just asked me a question. Well, I was, I was actually, you know, I came across that one. You know, Madam, uh, that's a very delicate aspect. That's a very, very delicate issue as well. Uh, sometimes, you know, we have our own constraints. we have to work you know within our limits as well webinar along with having advantages will have its own share of disadvantages as well uh, well i agree one thing that there will be a serious doubt on the listeners rather though we will have you know uh, many participants in the session some of them could be active some of them could be passive as well some of them could be passive that is a possibility which we cannot deny rather that we have to accept in fact uh, that's a necessity today rather so we it's all a question of trust so i can only do what best i can do from my end rather as long as i am faithful to my work well the rest is something which is not in my hands that actually is in the hands of my listener as well whether the listener is really intent enough to listen to my words that is left to the listener as well but i must not fail to have confidence in him or her that is my duty so even in the company of teachers here for example i must really believe that all my participants all my audience are absolutely good audience and that is how i will make my effort very prompt very sincere useful as well that's what i have believed thank you sir thank you i do have one more question can i sir i yeah, am sure by all means yeah uh, so you whenever we started this uh, particular topic that you are talking about 
the pronunciation of word especially when it uh, comes to a uh, latin language or any language for that matter when we want to say the definition of uh, you know which is being defined by somebody or you know especially it is a name of a person uh, so how how do we uh, say how do we pronounce because if it is a latin language the pronunciation goes some something different yeah i mean if, as far as uh, you know uh, names of people names of uh, you know recipes names of cuisine names of places it could be proper nouns or whatever rather every time you know we face this difficulty for example my name is ng narsimhan uh, for example somebody who is an african participant here or for that matter somebody from china somebody from you know chicago may not really hang you know may not really understand the nuance or you know uh, the correct way of pronouncing this name and that is something which we all have to accept but we should not you know uh, fail in making our effort rather we have so many other ways of understanding the correct pronunciation which we have you know we can get access to many books as well many sources from the net as well uh, we have many dictionaries where we can get the correct pronunciation uh, so that so we can make our honest efforts in making that happen thank, thank you sir yeah uh, thank you ma'am and uh, sir i have uh, one question uh, mm -hmm. what's your opinion about cross culture communication sir where the uh, language becomes the barrier uh, especially when you have the foreign students at the college. Yeah. Uh, madam, I would like to beg your pardon. It's not just a barrier when you have a foreign student in your classroom. Sometimes, you know, it's a barrier even, you know, amongst the localites here. For example, I have it in my own college, in my classroom. There are a good number of uh, students who do not have good access to English speaking ability. They don't have good communication skills in English and they simply say we are from Canada medium, sir, how to learn English, sir, and how to understand what you speak, sir. But unfortunately, I am doing an English lesson. I will have to read English. I will have to write English. I will have to make them understand in my own way of uh, you know English speaking. Well, I must have my own strategy in getting that confidence back, even from the localites. I'm not just talking about, you know, a Ghana student or for that matter, a, a Northeast student here, which, you know, which is quite difficult. I understand. In fact, I had once, you know, uh, one such a situation in Dayan and Sagar College where I had quite a good number of students from outside India as well. But how to solve this as well? Uh, whereas we have to stick to one style of English, for example, uh, there is an Indian way of speaking English today, you know, uh, even, even when I was studying, there was this uh, UK style and US style, uh, but today Indian English, Indian way of you know speaking English or writing English has come to the forefront, and that is where we can popularize you know this local culture as well, not to you know show any sort of disregard to that. So it is also an accepted format, and uh, most of the times you know it is uh, believed in the entire world that English is best spoken and used in our country. In India, so therefore, we can we can just have a one-to-one -one dialogue with such students, exclusive, you know, one-to-one -one chat with them, and not to forget that so-called Kannada medium students in our own classrooms. You know, uh, sometimes you know we have to resort to bilingual approach. There is nothing wrong in you know teaching certain aspects in Kannada, and if I can really bring in some you know Kannada poets. Canada writers or Canada lessons or poems rather, Canada songs as well. Uh, that will that will really enliven the atmosphere. That will actually make the student believe. Yes, I must also make an honest effort in understanding English as it is spoken, as it is used by the teacher. Rather. And that is where we can work out the situation. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, really. Uh, good uh, advice, uh, uh, I can say. Any other participants, like uh, uh, my colleague Ani wanted to ask one question to you, sir. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Very good afternoon, sir. Very good afternoon. So there is one question uh, from the Shah Sam. So, sir, can you say the research prospect of a communication skill in English? Uh, well, I don't get what is this uh, research prospectus of communication skills in English. Probably uh, 
are you asking me uh, some of the titles for the research or books to be referred or uh, i'm not able to get it but anyhow if you can uh, you know call me uh, for that matter or if you can consult you know any of uh, the books rather i mean the library as well probably you will get to know more about the communication books and you will have to visit certain good libraries as well wherein you will come across uh, books which are handy and you will also do that enable yourself to search on the web wherein you have access to communication skills as well so uh, there are many research papers written on communication skills by various authors uh, from various sources as well so we can we can make a very honest effort there i believe probably i cannot take the names of exactly the names of those people now but i tell you in fact if you can consult you know some of the uh, scholars available in your college or for the matter in your uh, acquaintance that will enable you to get hold of these uh, you know papers as well thank you sir there is uh, a one more question from said begum yeah yeah so I how got can it. we increase interest among the students in reading skill especially in the rural side could you please answer uh, yeah saida madam uh, saida begum ji uh, namaste uh, so how can we increase interest among students in reading skills especially in the rural side not just rural side madam there is a very urgent need for reading you know sessions reading practices in our classrooms itself let us not believe even for a moment that you know it's an urban university on it's an urban atmosphere it's a cosmopolitan situation not like that we have a heterogeneous society in our classroom scenario we have every sort of student coming in and we must respect their you know abilities their you know inability to comprehend and their preparedness or unpreparedness we have to respect them we have to understand the situation and we must really make our honest efforts to make them read. that's what i mentioned you know in one of my slides reading loudly will actually enable them to get better for example if i start reading loudly the passages or some concepts there i will be able to uh, you know help the teacher know what i am where i stand as far as pronunciation is concerned also i will have my own sounding rather how do i sound to my own ears and if there are any corrections required it will be made by you know my friends as well it could be made by my teacher and therefore that is how you can increase you know the interest i know very well having said that i have some of my students who say so we are not interested in reading certain things but when i when i ask them the reason why why not why can't you rather they say uh, simply you know out of fear uh, out of hesitation we don't like to sir we don't want to contribute ourselves for reading purpose but anyhow as you know class after class when you start getting closer and closer to that section of your you know audience probably they will also be interested for example if 10 students start reading the 11th student who would have you know shunned himself or herself from reading practice definitely he will also be motivated to read the next passage and that is you know something out of experience i'm giving you this tip thank you sir i hope ma'am's doubt has cleared if any participant have any doubts regarding to the session please do us unmute yourself and ask sir namaste 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 sir uh, sir really it was very wonderful sir just uh, i wanted to ask you one small question sir when we are maintaining eye contact yeah uh, sir tumba easy agi id class do neevu heladange around 100 80 plus nam class ella irutte so eye contact tumba neat agi maintain maartta irthi adre enagutte kelo ondu ered students ಅವರನ್ನೇ ಮತ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ನಾವ್ ಇಡೀ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ಐ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಮೇಂಟೈನ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ ಕಣ್ ಮತ್ ಅವ್ರ ಹತ್ರ ಹೋಗತ್ತೆ ಅವ್ರ ಲಿಸ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೈಲ್ ಆ ರೀತಿ ಇರತ್ತೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಅವಾಯ್ಡ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಕೆಲವೊಮ್ಮೆ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಹೌದು ಆ ಬಹುಶಃ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮಹಾವೀರ್ ಅವರೇ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಈಗ ನೀವು ಈ ಅನುಭವ ಏನ್ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಈ ಅನುಭವ ಹಲವಾರು ನಮ್ಮ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಗೆಲ್ಲ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿಗಳನ್ನ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಎಲ್ಲ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿ ನೋಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ನಾನು ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ Uh, uh, they should feel important they should yes sir you know they should feel their presence you know yes uh, yes even for a moment one kshana kaavu kuda nama teacher namana nodta illa namana ignore maartta idare navu en bekaru maadkobodu anno bhavane avaru bardiru hage navu avarne nodta irbeku 
ಚಾಲೆಂಜಿಂಗ್ ಇದೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕಡೆಯಲ್ಲೂ ಇದು ಸುಸೂತ್ರವಾಗಿ ನಡೆಯೋಲ್ಲ ಅನ್ನೋ ಅರಿವು ನನಗಿದೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಮಾಡೋದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವ ಒಂದು ಏನೋ ತೊಂದರೆ ಏನು ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ಒಂದು ಸಲ ದಯಮಾಡಿ ಇದನ್ನ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ಹೆಸರನ್ನ ನೀನು ಹಿಡಿದು ಪ್ರತಿ ಸಲ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಮಾತಾಡಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾಗ ಇಟ್ ಬಿ ಟ್ರಿವಿಯಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಅದು ಪಾಠದ ವಿಷಯ ಅಂತ ಅಲ್ಲ ಫಾರ್ ಎನಿ ನೋ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಒಂದು ಟ್ರಿವಿಯಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಯಾವುದೋ ಒಂದು ಒಂದು ವಿಚಾರಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಏನಪ್ಪಾ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿದೆಯಾ ಮೋಹನ್ ಹೇಗಿದೆಯಮ್ಮ ಏನೋ ಹೇಗಿದೆಯಪ್ಪ ರಾಜ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದಾಗ ಫೀಲ್ ದಟ್ ಎಫಿನಿಟಿ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಫೀಲ್ ದಟ್ ಬಿಲಾಂಗಿಂಗ್ನೆಸ್ ದ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಿಲಾಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಜನರೇಟ್ ಆಗ ಮುಂದಿನ ನಮ್ಮ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕೆಲಸಗಳು ಕೂಡ ಬಹಳ ಸುಸೂತ್ರವಾಗಿ ನಡೆಯುತ್ತೆ Yeah. Really. Uh, thank you, sir. Because uh, I'm practicing the same. The only yeah, thing yeah. is that uh, I can't take too much and maintain my back and try more the glee on the other more than I'm a cool too much and I care or what the number of power and all the edit it. I think I just thank you, sir. Hello, one day on the sir. Really, you know, you know, you know, you know, they would like, you know, the teacher to see at themselves. Number one, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, ನೀವೇನೋ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಕೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗಾಟ್ ದಿ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗಾಟ್ ದ ರಿಪ್ಲೈ ಅಂತ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸ್ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ನನ್ನನ್ನೇ ನೋಡ್ಲಿ ಅನ್ನೋ ಕಾರಣನೂ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅವರನ್ನ ನಾವು ಸೋದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೋತ್ಸಾಹ ಮಾಡೋದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವ ಆತಂಕನೂ ಇಲ್ಲ ರೈಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸರ್ ರೈಟ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು Okay. Thank you, sir. It was really a nice question. Everybody actually faces it at the classroom as yeah. sir said. And yeah. uh, one more, one more uh, last question uh, of mine, sir. Uh, okay. like though we have the command over the language sometimes uh, we feel phobia to speak with other people so mm-hmm. what do you say what how to avoid that phobia uh, during the communication now uh, i feel nannannu serskondu including me we all have you know this fear of confronting situations and people at times uh, we are afraid of the consequences most of the time ಅದು ನಮ್ಮ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಾಲ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ನನ್ನ ಹೆಚ್ ಓ ಡಿ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ನನ್ನ ಕಲೀಗ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಇಟ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿ ಮೈ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿ ಮೈ ನೋ ಚೇರ್ಮನ್ ಚೇರ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ಎವರ್ ಯಾರು ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೂ ಇಟ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿ ಮೈ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜರ್ ಇಟ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿ ಕೋಆರ್ಡಿನೇಟರ್ ಹೂ ಎವರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಆದರೆ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ನೆವರ್ ಫೇಲ್ ಇನ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ದೆಮ್ ವಿತ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಆರ್ ಹರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಫೇಲ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಬಿ ಡಿನಾಯಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಅ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಎ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೈ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ನನ್ನ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಏನು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಫಿಯರ್ ಇದೆ ಅಪ್ರಹೆನ್ಷನ್ ಇದೆ ಭಯ ಇದೆ ಒಂದು ರೀತಿಯ ನಾಚಿಕೆ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಶೈನೆಸ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಹೆಸಿಟೇಷನ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅದೆಲ್ಲವನ್ನು ಹೋಗ್ಲಾಡಿಸ್ಕೊಳಕ್ ಇರುವಂತಹ ಏಕೈಕ ವಿಧಾನ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಮಾತನಾಡೋದು ಸೊ ಈ ಸಂವಹನ ಕೌಶಲ್ಯ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಇದನ್ನ ನಾವು ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಶನ್ ಸ್ಕಿಲ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ಇದನ್ನೇ ನಾವು ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಐ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಸುಮಾರು ಜನ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ಗೆ ಈ ಒಂದು ಇನ್ಹಿಬಿಷನ್ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಈ ಒಂದು ಹೆಸಿಟೇಷನ್ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ದೇ ಮೇ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಯು ನೋ ದಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ಗಂಪ್ಷನ್ ಟು ಟಾಕ್ ಟು ದಿ ಎಲ್ಡರ್ಸ್ ದ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ಸ್ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆದ ಆದರೆ ನೀವು ಹೇಳುವುದನ್ನು ಪೊಲೈಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಹೇಳಿದಾಗ ವೆಲ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಯು ನೋ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪಾಸಿಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಎಸ್ ಆರ್ ನೋ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಇರೋದು ಆದರೆ ನೀವು ಹೇಳೋದನ್ನು ಬಹಳ ನಾಜುಕ್ ಆಗಿ ಹೇಳಿದಾಗ ಇನ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಯು ನೋ ಪ್ಲೀಸಿಂಗ್ ಮ್ಯಾನರ್ ಹೇಳಿದಾಗ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಇಂಪ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ on your efforts to become a good communicator bere enu aaglilla andru paravagilla neevu olleya communicator aagtira annodalli yav samshayanu illa thank you sir literally it is a, a good suggestion and definitely will bl- become blank to use the words when sometimes we are communicating with our superiors especially yeah. Uh, yeah. so any other participants who would like to ask uh good afternoon sir anita here madam namaste how are you namaste good good i just wanted Hello? to add
Yeah. But the, uh, we, we, our concentration should be more on our conversation yeah. rather than, uh, you know, yeah. whom we are speaking to and things like that. Yes, madam. Madam, uh, and uh, I, I also, I also uh, added in the chat box yeah. that uh, you know, communication in pedagogy is a matter of uh, a personality performance too. Yes, ma'am. You know, your personality is performing uh, yeah. and expressing itself in front of uh, thousands of students on a daily basis. Okay. Um, uh, so the basic uh, thing is again a matter of uh, whether you're confident or not. Inside yes, you may be diffident, but you have to uh, be a picture of confidence as a teacher. True. And only with that confidence, probably you can also sound a little more uh, uh, legible, a, a little more, uh, uh, you know, um, clear to your students. There would be more clarity. Many yes. a time it's uh, what we are saying and what we are uh, trying to say, you know, again, we have a lot of... Uh, confusions among, within ourselves and that itself creates a lot of uh, uh, diffident movement, moments and True. that very very quickly goes uh, uh, carries over to our students yes. so uh, to all the people who are yeah, younger teachers who are practicing yeah. uh, don't give a picture that you are diffident ever <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's all True. I wanted True. to say <laughs> Yeah. Madam uh, Anita, Madam, thank you so much. You said it. You said it, Madam. It was so rewarding to listen to your words as well. After a long time, rather, it was uh, it was uh, my luck as well. And I was just going through your uh, you know observation that communication to a teacher is a personality performance, cultivable, and learning you know is mandatory. Uh, that's why I added the word you know it's the heart of the art of teaching. You know, a teacher even for a moment, you know, should never get complacent, though he or she has got some 20 years or 30 years of service. Never I should get complacent that, you know, I'm experienced. I have learned it all. I have said it all. Yes. Even for a moment, yes. I should never become very, you know, like getting carried away by my experience. So I should be a performer. I should be an artist every time I enter a classroom. So I must be, exactly. I must be with some fresh open mind. I must be very receptive to what I'm going to get from my students. And that is exactly the observation which I have made. I salute you, madam. Thank you. And you know, there's nothing wrong in admitting, uh, you know, mm. if you don't know something, yeah, yeah. there's nothing wrong in admitting to our students. I will uh, uh, consult, uh, you know, uh, yeah. and uh, let you know later. Yeah. Uh, because I remember in my experience, you know, I, I, I oh, there was some idiom, which was an urban slang. And mm. I was not very conversant with the yeah. urban slang. And I, and I, and I said, what is this? And then one of the students stood up and then, said this is the meaning i said okay thank you and uh, <laughs> there's nothing wrong <laughs> perhaps i think i have felt very happy by your very positive nod man you know that is that is the yeah. sign of a good teacher that's a sign of a good student as well as a good teacher so it's a good learning yeah. system. It's a good teacher. Uh, and also a small uh, observation among the new teachers you yeah young breed of teachers maybe yeah. it is because you know there is so much of competition outside that uh, the young breed of teachers uh, don't want to admit in any kind of way a fault or an error. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, we should go over, get out of that, uh, you know, rut. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Uh, one honest, thank uh, you, sir. Honest, yeah, thank you, ma'am. I honestly request to all my dear friends, especially young brigade, young brigade of teachers, be with the students and try to accept, you know, what is the reality and try to equip yourself better and better for every classroom the next day, every classroom. Thank you. Uh, so sir, I, I think all of you must give a big round of applause to both of the legends. It was really well said <laughs> and really happy for that. I must thank Anita and Adam for this. <laughs> oh, sir. Sir. <laughs> sir Rajendran, yeah. Oh, Namaste Rajendra. Uh, sir, how are you, sir? Okay. Absolutely good. Yeah. Uh, sir, one sir? question. I just wanted one, one small thing. Yeah. Fear, we were talking about fear. Mm -hmm. So one acronym I have just wanted to share with you. Mm -hmm. False expectations are real. Mm -hmm. That is all the cause for fear. Mm -hmm. So once we remove this false expectations and have true expectations, I think the teachers can do a really wonderful job. That's Absolutely. what is my opinion. So we should remove that uh, fear. So to remove that, all expectations should be removed. How do you uh, feel, Mr. Sir? You're That's very well said, sir. You're absolutely right, uh, Mr. Rajendran. 
I would uh, you know add a little more to this statement of yours. Okay, yes. Expectation itself is very very dicey. No, it's yes. going to it's going to sometimes you know uh, make you very devastated as well because uh -huh. even in life other way you know in in other words to have expectations mm. from relationships from people in itself is a matter of uh, you know ambiguity there. So that's why what you said is yeah. correct. Uh, you can't have every time positively responding to your call. So you will have to be a little yeah. bit more patient. Uh, you should yeah. spend a lot of time with the student as well to make him or her understand what you want him or her to understand rather. Yeah. So you're right uh, to have expectations is a bit dicey. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. So you really had a nice your talk was really excellent. same here. Thank same. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It looks like we have covered most of the questions, uh, Nasiman sir. Uh, like uh, it's a time for wrap up. We have uh, dragged it little uh, ten or fifteen minutes. Sorry uh, for that. But okay. and, uh, now I uh, yes, sir. Now I request uh, Professor Keithi, Madam, Department of Commerce and Management, to propose the vote of thanks. Over to you, Keithi, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Okay. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude. Gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. Thankfulness may consist merely of words. Gratitude is shown in acts. It's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution of those who work really hard to make this event possible. Hi, Keithi, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce and Management. On behalf of Nanajyoti Degree College and the entire fraternity of the institution, Extend my sincere thanks to the Almighty for making today's webinar a grand success. On behalf of our institution, I extend a RTO vote of thanks to our resource person, Professor N.G. Narsimhan sir, for your informative, come knowledgeable session. Thank you so much, sir. Thank I you, madam. Also, thank you. Thank you, sir. I also extend a warm thanks to our management for their continuous support. Also to our respected principal sir for his encouragement and support. With a deep sense of Kitty, your voice is mute. Yes, on behalf of Nanajyoti Degree College, I would. Uh, uh, uh thank i would like to thank uh, professor narsivan sir our management principal sir and uh, my special thanks to our technical team and uh, all the hod's ipc coordinator mac coordinator everyone supported a lot to happen this uh, event and uh, a special once again a very special thanks to uh, you sir narsivan sir for accepting our invitation and uh, uh, honoring the uh, uh, event and uh, I'm uh, really, uh, really thankful to you, Riva, and it, uh, the memory is going to linger forever, sir. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. And I have a point to make. I, have I, a point. Also, I also would like to thank our participants so patiently. They are all listening, and uh, thank you for attending our uh, uh, webinar so uh, like patiently. Thank you, thank you, one and all, sir. Nasiman, sir, thank uh, you. Wanted to say something. Yeah. I am really grateful and thankful to all my wonderful people as audience. It was highly rewarding. Thanks to you because you know you were instrumental in making this happen. So thanks to you, madam, as well. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I request uh, once again all the participants to fill the feedback form uh, to get the certificates. The link uh, is shared in the WhatsApp group, uh, in the chat box, and in the WhatsApp group. Uh, it is available now itself. You will get the certificates uh, till evening six o'clock, and uh, uh, and uh, and even uh, we will upload the video in the uh, YouTube also. Uh, so thank you one and all, and uh, thank you Kirti also uh, like for proposing the vote of thanks due to technical issues like her voice was not audible. Uh, so thank you each and everyone. Thank you Nasiman sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, one and all. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. For your, uh, with your permission, we, will, we want to wind up the sessions. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, madam. Thank you so Thank much. You, sir. Thank you, Bye. sir. Bye.